Okay. What is up, Rap Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's Holly Sniper video. All right, this is part four in the series, and unfortunately, I went to the parts store to get some 516 fuel pressure line. They didn't have it today. So, we're going to do the wiring tonight because I didn't have the fuel on to finish it. So, the wiring of your Holly Sniper EFI, super simple. If you watched the initial video for the sniper, I went through everything that you would need right here. So we have positive and negative on the battery, a keyed ignition hot while cranking, or I guess to make sure that it stays hot while it's cranking, and a tack signal. The O2 sensor, coolant sensor, and fuel pump wiring, also additional things, but these here you need to pull from your car. So I'm going to show you where I'm pulling those from the from the car, show you the wires in the harness that go there. Okay, so if you remember in the initial RX-7 video, because this is a sniper on a rotary, so on your 84 RX-7 you have keyed hot that stays cranking that runs your ignition. So we're going to pull that. We need the negative from the trailing coil for your tack signal. We're going to pull that from right here. And then you need positive and negative for the battery. The positive is inside this rag. This is just to keep it from shorting out on there. There's some wiring goodies going on in this car that we're going to take care of at the same time that aren't exactly sniper related. Okay, So those are the four things you need to make your Holly Sniper turn on, work, the whole deal. Things you have to modify on your car. Okay, Now, the Holly Sniper, okay, as far as I know, does not have a split timing feature okay I'll do some more research on it maybe we get enough people interested Holly would be interested in adding that programming into this setup but for right now Holly sniper can only control your standard V8 style piston style timing okay like one coil okay not the two coil like it doesn't have two tables it doesn't have split to split coil tables I guess you could control more than one coil but you can't run it leading and trailing setup. At least as far as I'm concerned, you can't. So we're keeping the stock ignition setup on this. So, with that being said, you can ignore, for now, these two wires, which are your ignition wires for running like a GM HEI distributor, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the purple and green ones. And if you read your instruction manual, you'll see, for our situation, focusing on the ignition stuff, we're working with coil negative, okay? So, the wiring is going to look much like this one right here. Alright, so this bottom one, we've got coil input yellow running to the negative side of the ignition coil. And that is telling the Holly Sniper what RPM we're at. Fortunately for us, the car already pulls a tack signal from there. So we don't have to do anything for the car. We're just going to piggyback off of that signal. Right? So that's this. The Holly also has outputs so you can run a tachometer off of it. Okay. So keep that in mind. This is where I was getting at with the purple and green. Those are more so so if you have an MSD box on your car, you can actually pull your tack signal, your cranking signal straight from the MSD box. So if you have that, go to the CD box segment of the program here. Okay. Holly fortunately gives us a lovely pinouts. For the, the wiring harness for the sniper, it's the most simple wiring harness ever. I think there's only eight wires or something that come out of this thing. So look at this. There's eight. Um, all the other connectors are pre-terminated on the harness. So let's look at the harness. As I mentioned a little bit ago, purple and green. Don't need those. They do include another little adapter plug. Purple wire. <coughs> excuse me. Purple wire. You won't need that. The key things we need. Black and red. Positive, negative. For your battery okay the pink wire is the wire that you need to hook up to a keyed on that stays hot while cranking okay right there the yellow wire is the wire that goes to your tack signal so coil negative the blue wire you need to run all the way back to the fuel pump okay holly does an awesome job labeling all these even all the way back here at the connector Okay, so this connector right here plugs into the sniper unit. You're going to have to find a place to mount the main fuse for your Holly Sniper and the fuel pump relay, which is here. Okay. Now, your little Holly Sniper EFI control box also has a pre-terminated 
plug on the end of it. So we're going to move over to the car where the sniper's already mounted. The sensors are all mounted. Go check those. We still have to mount the fuel pump, but we'll get to that in the next video. Okay. So wiring. You untuck all of the stuff that got stuck down in here because these connectors are big. Okay. So hey, we got like horse flies in here. Horse flies. All right. This is the main plug for your sniper, the big one. This is going to plug into that harness I just showed you over there. This little plug right here, um, I believe, goes to our coolant temperature sensor. Man, it's actually not labeled on this. This oddly looking shaped one goes to our O2 sensor. This one right here, the can plug, goes to the control module box. There's going to be other harnesses like this one, right? six pin harness that will be used if you're running the sniper to control the ignition okay and that's for the muscle car people um, that have real simple ignition setups so that outlines there's only five big plugs that come off your sniper so we're going to use four of them not the ignition one okay so majority of this harness how I'm going to run it I'm going to come right over here under this charcoal canister which I'm leaving in place um, as this canister just does the crankcase vent, much like a catch can, crankcase vent, fuel tank vent. I'm going to run these wires right over here. The wiring for that little screen will go through the main um, grommet right here into the cabin. And then the rest of the wiring will be routed up here under the cowl to the battery over there. Okay, I bought, this is what I prefer to work with, is some of this braided loom. Um, you can't really see it too well, but this is like, yeah, you can't see that at all. It's that like nylon braided loom that's got a split in it. Um, I think that that looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than just zip tying everything in different places. And then also, once we have the sniper harness figured out, tonight I'm going to be stripping back this harness most likely. So this is the original car harness here. I'm going to strip back a lot of the electrical tape off of this and pull out a majority of the wiring um, that was on this car. Okay, so this is an original 84, 85 engine harness with all the emission stuff on it, and we don't need all that. So why are we going to have, you know, basically this whole harness right here is completely unused, so we don't want to just let it chill. This whole section over here is completely unused, so we don't just want to let that chill. Your alternator plug which I've noted here, and your sensors for your gauges, which I've noted here, are the only ones we're going to be keeping intact in that harness. The rest of it, for now, I'm going to pull it all back and tuck it in this corner, and then uh, once I know that the car is good to go and it's running, then we'll cut all those wires, remove the existing connectors, and remove all that excess wire out of the harness, but I don't want to get rid of it until we know we're all good. So um, that's my plan for tonight for, to for this video. Um, in other news as well, I'm just going to build a simple little bracket to hold the screen right here off to the right of the radio um, that'll mount to the dash through one of the dash mounting holes. So I can show you that bracket. It's going to be the simplest thing out of some fairly thin steel that I have laying around. I'll just cut it with a 10 snips get it mounted in there. Pretty low traffic area, pretty low traffic thing. Ideally, we shouldn't have to really be messing with it too much. And this little screen will slide out of its case. Like so, and you can play with this as if you were playing a game on your phone. And this thing will be what stays mounted on the, the dashboard. So, fairly simple setup. I'm going to go ahead and get this harness plugged in, find a place to mount those relays, run the wires across the other side of the engine bay, and uh, start getting that stuff loomed up, and then I'm going to start de-looming the other harness here and removing the junk. So, pretty stoked. Honestly, it was in the... The mood when I got home from work today to get covered in fuel and replace a whole bunch of fuel lines on this car, but fortunately for me, we're playing with wiring. So let's get to uh, doing all of this and I will update you guys when we start making some more progress. Quick tip before we uh, show you some of the finished product of the wiring harness here and get to connecting it to the battery. If you need to pull a wire up through your firewall through the dash, take another wire or string or whatever you got, coat hanger works really well, run it in the hole first find it under the dash, make sure you didn't cross anything you didn't want to, tape 
the wire you want to pull back through the dash to the end of it and then pull it back up. So I went ahead and pulled this grommet out for now. I want to make a hole in this grommet that I can shove the connector through from right here where it's really easy instead of trying to fight it from the bottom. And then the blue wire for the fuel pump will also run back under the carpet across to where the fuel pump is. So tech tip as I almost drop you guys on the ground. I got the wires ran in front of the right ran in front of the radiator, but I will show you that when we get there. Alrighty folks, we have made some mad progress. So, um, the grommet is tucked back in. You can see the CAN bus wire and the fuel pump wire going through the bottom of that. Um, there's some excess O2 sensor wiring, which I believe there usually is in just about every O2 sensor that I've installed. So I've got that zip tied up out of the way over here. For the uh, 8045 guys, there's a big washer fluid reservoir. You can see it sitting on the ground over there. That is going to sit right here, so it should cover and take some of these plugs. Um, the cruise control is gone, which would have, is what would have been right here. Uh, charcoal canisters back on. I loomed up the wiring real nice right here. This is the coolant temp sensor wire, which I will run with the body harness. So we'll call it that is going to run the gauges. Um, so from this harness, what I will have left is going to be, like I said earlier, the alternator wire right here. So this plug will go. All these will go away. All these will go away, and then these small wires at the end will run across to the sensors that run your gauges, which are underneath the uh, oil pedestal there. You can see, looking all nice. Um, this plug, one of the leads was actually broken, so this is just being a plug right now. Um, the rest of the harness I routed through here, so you can see the fuel pump wire actually comes out of the front of this harness and turns around backwards and goes into the cabin, so kind of looping through there. You can see the shades of blue. The rest of this harness is all loomed up in that nylon braided stuff that I got attached to the AC um, condenser line, the cold side line, so there's insulation around that line right now, not the metal part back here, so that's where that's at. It goes up in front of the radiator. You can see the, see the shiny newness go across. And this is where this gets funky on this car in particular. You see all the rally lights, right? We got six lights up here, which means that there is six, like, standalone wiring harnesses that are tapped onto this battery, right? Bunch of another, bunch, <laughs> bunch another, it's late. A whole bunch of wires, two posts on the battery. It's kind of a mess, and I cleaned it up a bunch. So, and in addition to that, in addition, there is, like, one of those aftermarket electronic fan wires on here so don't let the messiness of this fool you this is way better than it was so there was a whole bunch of tangled mess over here with um, fuses for the rally lights we had another fuse set and another fuse for your fan relay and stuff which I have all that just tucked and zip tied down here so it's not going to hit anything this is the plug for my electronic fan the wiring for the sniper comes up through all of that you can kind of not see, but the braided harness basically ends right here. Um, right where my middle finger is at, that's where that harness ends. So, the yellow wire is the tack signal, which is on the negative side of the trailing coil. The pink wire is the keyed on wire, and that's on the positive side of either of the coils. They share the same feed, okay? Um, this wire right here, it's kind of dirty because I was touching it with the yellow end on it is the positive for the sniper this yellow wire right here or black wire with the yellow end on it is the negative wire for the sniper um just jammed on with the rest of the the lights and stuff so yeah i gotta put that nut back on but i'll probably pull this off we're gonna go ahead right now we should be good to go to turn the key on and see if the light or i say the light but see if the screen lights up. Um, I'm not going to go through any of the settings or anything in this video, but we're just going to verify that we have power where we need to have power. Okay, so fuel pump wire, not touching anything currently, so it shouldn't matter. Um, I'm not going to have anything weird happen, but I'm going to make sure the screen comes on, put that radiator 
um, valence piece back on and then I'm going to go ahead and build this bracket and build the little pieces I need for my throttle cable which I didn't do in the last video. So hopefully nothing burns to the ground and does the 8485 fuel pump prime itself when I turn the key on? We might spray fuel out of the uh, the lines up here, hopefully not. Neutral, just going to key on. Should be just uh, full here, it should turn on. The uh, the fuel pump's running behind me, so I need to unplug that. Because, did we make a mess? Oh, we made a mess. Good job, Eric. Good job. Alright, so, this will be in the fuel pump video, but your fuel pump wiring. We got an umbrella in here. This. Some spare oil. Peel this carpet back. Peel this carpet back. This guy right here should turn our fuel pump off. Because that is the fuel pump plug. Let's see. Were we correct? Yes, we were. All right. So the Holly has kicked into turn on mode. How about that, guys? We got a car with a carburetor that now has screens and stuff. Mega. Okay, so we want to go to monitor, monitors, and we want to see sensors. And it is hot as balls here. So you can see CTS, coolant temp sensor, is uh, 95. Because it's like legit 95. So, dope. We got coolant temp sensor reading. We got all the other stuff we need. So, for now, that's going to be the end of this. I will show you guys here in the end of this video um, what that stuff kind of looks like. I'm going to go ahead and tidy up the chassis harness to go across there so that you'll see that in the end of this video. And then I'll show you guys this bracket and then we'll close out the video after that. So, let me get those two things finished up. This pretty much concludes the Holly Sniper part of this video, but if you want to uh, see how I finish up the RX-7 part of the video, um, so if you're installing this on some other rotary, um, then you can omit this part or just watch it if you enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and build this bracket so this thing's chilling right here, and then uh, get the, the front end of that done. So if you're looking for the fuel pump wiring, basically it's just this blue wire, and you need to run it all the way back to the fuel pump, the fuel pump will be grounded, so ground the other post on that fuel pump just somewhere back there by the fuel pump. Make sure you clean the paint off, get a good ground. You don't need to run a ground wire back up to the front, just this. Um, and the fuel pump from the Holly is controlled by the relay, by the ECU in the Holly. You don't have to do anything. So just unplug your factory fuel pump wiring. I'm just going to leave it back there and just chilling. We'll pull out the factory fuel pump and it's appurtenances replace it with the holly stuff and that video will be up on thursday so once i can get to o'reilly's and get the size fuel pressure or uh fuel pressure fuel injection hose because you're not going to run carburetor stuff for that so a few little bits to tidy up here we'll show you some beauty shots of that and kind of go through everything at the end and then uh that'll be pretty much it ladies and gentlemen we have completed the wiring portion of this program. So, I wanted to show you guys this. Like I said, this is more RX-7 specific stuff than it is Holly Sniper stuff. Um, this knowledge would be great if you're like putting a Weber or anything like that on an 8485. So, I went ahead and stripped back the entirety of that harness that you saw just a second ago. And I reloomed the portion that you need. Okay, so when you take your harness out, mark the alternator plug. And then you simply need to mark the like four or five wires that run around your oil pedestal because those are the ones that connect to the sensor for oil pressure, uh, water temp, oil level sensor that's in the bottom of the block. And I think there's a dummy light down there for your oil level sensor as well. Bluetooth keeps connected to my phone, which is in the house. Um, all the rest of this, okay, are all your emissions plugs. So you've got like the, uh, the little green plug that goes on the carburetor for, I think, your solenoid. You've got the TPS plug. You've got all the little, like, this solenoid for turning on cruise control. You've got the solenoid rack solenoids, right? All that stuff. So the only thing that I cut, okay, the only thing I had to cut to get to this point where I'm at right now is I cut the ground wires here 
and I cut the ground wires down here. Reason being, the alternator wire runs into one of the ground wires, so I kept the ground wire, the main one, to the alternator. Okay. The rest of this, you can literally just untangle it, comes right apart. My plan for this in the future here, once the car fires, and I know it's good, I know all my gauges work, I know that I didn't cut one of the wrong wires, I know that none of this is dependent upon any of that, right? And the alternator charges, then I'm going to go ahead and take all of these, I'm going to dice it off right here, insulate the end of each wire so they can't short out or touch anything, and this group of wires will simply get tucked into this loom and you'll never know that all of that was gone. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because this harness here is going to get included, the owner can keep it, um, and then at any point in time, if it ever wants to revert back to stock, which I highly doubt that that would ever happen um, to this car, but uh, should that ever happen, um, he'll have the harness. If we need to splice it all back together, you can simply solder everything back on, put it back together. So that's the reason to do it that way. Um, some people will strip it all out, race car people will strip it all out, but otherwise, I just love how clean it looks in here with all that extra wiring gone, right? Looks super nice and tidy. Um, and it's just it's just the way to go. Uh, makes it look like a million bucks. So, with that being said, I didn't make the bracket for the little sniper thing, which you guys will see that probably in the fuel pump video. Whenever it gets built, um, it's no big deal. You can mount it however you want. Um, literally, all I'm gonna do is take a piece of strap steel, bend it to 90, drill a hole. It's gonna mount to the dash bolt on the side. And I'm going to drill two holes in the back of the uh, this guy, the sniper little case. And then this case will essentially mount. And then the sniper ECU looking screen will slide down into it. Uh, super simple. Super, super simple. So intake options um, while you're here, just because you'll see it in the first start video. But um, for the intake, we're going to run a little carb hat here to a tube, to a bulkhead pipe that I'm going to cut a hole here and have a bolt that holds it in and then the filter will be up in front of the radiator so you'll have a, a soft flexi tube that comes over and connects to this and then from this it'll go through and the filter will reside up in that nice hole positive pressure cool air yes we might see a little bit of restriction to your radiator whoop de doo the engine is sucking better better colder air and i don't think it's going to affect cooling in this car you never know, but the filter should sit far enough away. Air will go around it. It'll still go through the, the uh, radiator. So that's where that's going. What do we have left? Fuel pump. That's the next video. Top it off with coolant. Try to start this thing. So pretty stoked. Pretty easy job. Last week was a little bit rough for me. Um, outside of doing this stuff, just had a lot of stuff going on. So I didn't really... The, the videos you saw last week, I did on the weekend. I didn't make much progress on it last week, but that's okay. We're making progress now getting this thing cranked out. So stoked with how it's looking. That is going to pretty much sum up the wiring video. So thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it red.